Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're at the Cryptopolitan, your one-stop shop for all news when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. I'm your host, Satoshi Sean. Uh, if it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. We get out videos to you every day. Um, and uh, we can report as well. Uh, you can also head over to my personal channel, Satoshi Sean. Uh, got uh, lots of reviews and uh, everything else. More than more personal stuff for me. Um, we also have a, uh, a cryptocurrency trading group that's free um, called Kiss Crypto. The links are in my videos. If you check out this video I just did on a super order, it's a, uh, a trading terminal that we're thinking about using in the group. Um, we also have a signals group for uh, signal trades. It's all free, so head over there and check it out. Um, also, today's Thursday, so we're going to be doing our show over on DLive, Drunk on Crypto. You can watch me act irresponsibly, uh, get drunk, and talk about crypto. Let's head back over to the Cryptopolitan and get into today's news. There's quite a few things to go over. Um, first off, the SEC's uh, Robert Cohn is leaving his position. And it's really, I think, going to open up some uh, some possibilities when it comes to cryptocurrency. He's been kind of a... Had, he's had a hard line. I don't want to use the A word, but... Um, the head of the United States Securities Exchange Commission Cyber Unit, Robert Cohn, has recently uh, announced his resignation from the position. He'd only been there for about two years, so basically he came into office right around the beginning of the uh, of the bull run and the ICO boom. He has been, like I said, had kind of a hard line. Uh, he, you know, the one that charged uh, DJ Khalid and uh, Floyd Mayweather um, went after Kick. He, you know, uh, and Ken had a He's had a busy, you know, a busy time when it comes to uh, to going after crypto projects. But now that Cohen has left, many think the SEC will change its stance uh, towards initial coin offerings, which has already been somewhat confirmed with their dealing with Blockstat and its $28 million ICO, as well as reports that there are numerous uh, gaming-related projects being allowed. Uh, coin admittance as they don't quite fall under the securities classification. I think the gaming industry, because they've used in-game currency for so long, which is technically a uh, a utility token. Um, you know, it's not on exchanges or anything. It's it, it's completely within its own ecosystem. But it is really a thousand percent a utility token, just used on whatever game um, or gaming uh, company. Like, you can probably use Zencoin in different Different games, things like that. Not Zen Coin. That it's with the Zeni Zeni Coin. All right, we'll drop. We'll stop that now. Um, next, we'll head over to um, the Department of Defense is looking to use blockchain technology for better cybersecurity. Finally, um, which is weird that this has taken so long. It has been hinted that a potential usage of blockchain technology for better security when it comes to transactions uh, and communications between uh, government agencies. So basically, they're going to try to use it like Horizon or uh, Apollo with an encrypted messaging platform using blockchain, um, which would make things a lot more secure and less uh, less 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 easy to be be hacked or uh, or spied upon by bad actors. Um, well, actors, it's a government. They're kind of a bad actor themselves. Um, the experiment um, will allow personal transfer encoded messages and transactions which can be traced uh, through a decentralized ledger or blockchain. Um, so that's going to be huge for adoption. It's, uh, was it DFAS that's doing it? No, DARPA. DARPA, or the uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. DARPA is kind of the elite uh, arm of the United States government that just... Well, they're kind of like the most evil, evil arm of the government. They're the one that takes science and technology and pretty much weaponize it or use it. For, how can we use this for the military? Um, so I guess if you look at through history, you know, anything with science, they're the ones that try to try to weaponize it or use it for the military. Um, but I think it will definitely open up a lot of uh, new pathways for blockchain. All right. And our old buddy... Mr. Carpellis is in the news again. He's being sued um, in Philadelphia, which is where he lives, um, again, for, uh, I believe it is malpractice. And, uh, you know, the guy's an idiot. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, negligence uh, and fraud. 
which he's been charged with that embezzlement um, in uh, quite a few different countries. This is mainly like the one where he was uh, being sued or charged in um, Canada. Due to the fact that Mount Gotch was largely based in Tokyo, Carpellis has requested the suit to be dismissed as he believes the local court did not have jurisdiction to process it. That sounds like common sense, but he's in the United States, so... However, his request was denied by the local judge, and now he could face a class action lawsuit. So get ready, America. You lost money in Mt. Gox. Class action lawsuit. Um, there's charges, basically, that you know he was just an idiot, which you can't deny that, um, to where he actually uh, you know, specifically knew what was going on. Um, you know, Mt. Gox was just a Magic the Gathering website that really started everything with Bitcoin, so bunch of nerds who were uh, playing magic and then uh they really i think you know they, i think he was just in over his head of course from the beginning but it's billions of dollars so um some really cool news with uh, about adoption um and jack dorsey with uh he's the ceo of twitter with his square um he had an ama with his uh with steve lee who is the head of the uh cryptocurrency uh let me read it made an appearance on popular twitter session steve lee squares cryptocurrency team head that's the words cryptocurrency team head uh went the extra mile to cultivate his bitcoin mass adoption uh, in his first ever ama lee uh reacted in a series of questions in relation to the firm's focus on the role in popularizing bitcoin so it looks like square is really and um Hence, then, Twitter and that whole side of social media is really pushing towards Bitcoin. I wonder if this is going to uh, be at odds with Facebook and Libra. Could be. Um, but, you know, it might, Libra may not even launch. But the fact that it uh, has brought so much interest into cryptocurrency, I think if it doesn't launch, it would actually be pretty cool. It would actually be the perfect, <laughs> the, as this the perfect storm. Number one, it's not out there. It's not screwing stuff up. Number two, it brought everyone's interest into cryptocurrency. And number three, it just shows how much power the government has over any centralized entity when it comes to currency and how they can't do crap about Bitcoin or uh, decentralized currencies. Um, next, we'll go over some conferences. One is the Crypto Conference 2019. Um, explore new opportunities. This is uh, October 3rd. 14th through 15th. It's in um, Estonia. It's a two-day international event in uh, crypto fin conference. So it's crypto and uh, fintech. Um, they're going to have 50, 30 speakers, 50 exhibitors. I've always wanted to go to Estonia. Um, this is more of a blockchain tools as uh, for business, banking, uh, finance industry, that kind of stuff. There is another the, um, there's another conference that looks really cool. It is the uh, the Herc Technology uh, Blockchain Futurist Conference. Yes, Herc, the Herc Conference. Of course, that looks cool. I'm Herc. I heard about you, man. Taking names and writing checks out to kick it ass, man. Um, the Futurist Conference. Herc. It's uh, it's brought to you or it's sponsored by Herc, the uh, the blockchain project. Um, they're a supply chain. They're a very ambitious supply chain project um, because they're not just covering one aspect of it. They're covering all aspects of supply chain, whether it's like industrial and retail, uh, real estate, as well as you know the usual, also medical, pharmaceutical, um, food. On the food end, um, that's kind of cool. Um, they're going to sh showcase their uh, the te technology um, by catering the entire event. Um, by producing, uh, by putting produce, uh, more on Hearst platform, they're going to verify the providence of the food that's being served, um, at the Blockchain Futures Conference. They'll provide breakfast on both days of the conference, as well as signature nut mixes. Oh my. Um, snacks and more. The attendees will be able, through the power of blockchain, to verify the origins of these food items. So all of the uh, attendees of the conference, they'll be able to verify their own nuts. Oh my. That is about it. Um, 
That is August 13th through 14th in Toronto, Canada. I am Satoshi Sean. You're at the Cryptopolitan, your one-stop shop for all blockchain and cryptocurrency news. And yes, sometimes I do act like a 12-year-old. See you guys in the next video. Proof tap, bros. That's right, living the dream. Come on, punch it in. Boom! I wear French fries, you stay potato. That's all right. You kind of came in on the slow bus, too, but you got there, so I got respect for that. I'm going to see you around, though, okay? Okay, let's roll!